So, for all of you guys out there who are into mechanical keyboards, my buddies, I still had a couple of entries from Akko to go through. And because of similarities between all of them and even other mechanical keyboards from Akko that we looked at recently, uh, today is going to be a little bit different. We're going for a mechanical keyboard double bill review, featuring the 3068 Silent BT keyboard from Akko and the Sakura Jelly TKL, which is a very visually loud keyboard. All right? All right. Okay, so the first contender is the Akko 3068 Silent BT, which is a mechanical keyboard with Gateron pink switches inside, which aren't exactly known for being silent, but Akko sure as hell seems to think that it is because there's absolutely nothing else about the 3068's build that would help with acoustics. Take a listen. Okay, I might have led you guys to believe that the acoustics off this board were like terrible, which is not exactly the case, but it obviously could have been better, right? It's just that since the case is plastic, it's not very dense, there's no insulating material and there's, you know, it's pretty hollow, you basically can't really expect it to sound any different from what it does. Touch typists are probably not going to find this board to be too loud or obtrusive, but if you do bottom out, it does have a bit of a louder hollow sound. But at least it comes with pre-lubed stabilizers out of the box, which, I mean, it, they are barely lubed, to the point that it helps with the rattling noises from the stabilizers, but really doesn't do much in terms of acoustics. But there are also no really big issues with pinging here, so so I'd rate the 3068 as being on the good side of basic sounding keyboards. Now continuing our look through the build, it is obviously a 65% keyboard layout which yes, did get a couple of points right at the bat, thanks for asking. It's got a slightly recessed USB Type-C connection, rubber feet but no height adjustment, Bluetooth 5.0 with wired duo mode, it is programmable with Echo's own macro software, and it has a 1800 million power battery inside that would get to about 30 to 40 hours of usage with lighting, and I wouldn't uh, put it past 80 without lighting, really. And finally, dice-subbed BBT OEM keycaps that frankly, I'd rather they had been thicker, and I mean much thicker, ABS plastic than this particular PBT built, especially if this decision was made because of costs. The keycaps are so thin, the board lights them up almost entirely. It's actually quite weird because it's not really the intended design, or at least doesn't seem to be. And guys, saying that your keycaps have a silent color theme doesn't really make them sound any quieter, all right? The 3068 looks like to be a more down low, subdued overall keyboard design, which kind of makes this whole thing about the lighting feel a little bit out of character almost. At 110 bucks, the 3068 basically delivers the same experience that you would get with a Akko Neon that we recently reviewed, but in a 65% layout with a different overall design aesthetic and proposition, and actually with slightly worse acoustics. Now, by contrast, this is the Sakura Jelly TKL. And this board is perhaps one of the most unique in design and construction that I've seen lately. It's not supposed to be a silent keyboard, and this one is also using Gateron Pinks, which is a billion percent in line with the overall aesthetics of this keyboard, right? But because of how dense everything is, it does end up being quite a bit softer in the sound profile compared to the 3068. Check it out. It's not super quiet, but it's much less intrusive, don't you think? It also doesn't have any of those heavier notes, that it lacks the thockiness that you would maybe expect from a mechanical keyboard, 
but that's the nature of how the build is actually made. The jelly is comprised of four sheets of acrylic screwed together with basically enough space inside for the PCB and the cutouts for the USB Type-C cable on the back and it also serves as the plate for the actual keyboard which means there is very little space for any insulation or dampening material inside but it also means there's basically no space for any resonance either at least apparently. Now not being hot swap means you can't really do much about the switches or the stabilizers. The latter coming with at least a little bit of lube, not that much really pre-applied. I mean it could be helping a little bit in terms of sound, but it's not even enough to help with the rattly noises from those tabs. You could maybe use a syringe or a very small tipped brush to, you know, paint or add in, squeeze in a little bit of lube in the stabilizer shafts, which does help with the overall sound profile, which is something that we've shown in our AJS Zinc review. You can check that up there and it will definitely help, but I wouldn't say that without it, this board is 100% unusable. Because of how dense everything is and how subdued the overall sound profile is already, even the rattly noises of the stabilizers doesn't make this a board that would drive you crazy. Now I can't attest to how the board actually sounds with one of the other two options for switches being get yellows or get oranges, but I would also put the jelly on the good side of basic sounding keyboards. But again, since someone has to win here, um, I would give the crown to the jelly in this particular topic as well. Now anyway, about the build of the jelly, it is quite obviously a TKL keyboard, which means it's going to occupy a little bit more space on your desk with the dedicated arrow cluster to the side. The USB-C port is very flush to the outside of the board, so a little bit of your connectors might actually show when plugged in. Not a huge deal, but there's that. It's got four little round rubbery feet on the bottom to help it not slide around, and the board itself is not angled, but it does come with separate triple height adjustment attachments that you can literally glue to the underside of the keyboard with 3M sticky tape. Now, it's not the most elegant solution I've ever seen for this problem, but because of how the jelly is actually put together, it at least gives you the option and it's better to have the option than not right? Just bear in mind that with those attachments, the bare minimum height is already going to be a little bit higher than with the stock little rubber round feet. There's no Bluetooth or wireless options here, it's only cabled connections. It is also programmable with the same Echo Macro software as the 3068, and the keycaps are OEM profile and apparently made of PBT die subbed plastic, but they're using a pudding design which helps spread the frankly crazy levels of RGB illumination this board has. And this I'd say is the Jelly's claim to fame because it's all about the design here and how that design complements the lighting. The Jelly's got perky RGB illumination and several down firing LEDs to maximize exposure and brightness. And you can even control those two different sections individually, but because of the construction and translucency of the board, the color you choose for the keycaps will spill slightly to the sides on the two topmost layers, while the bottom LEDs will be shining that second color to the bottom two layers and downwards. Because of the pink tone of the acrylic and of the keycaps, there is obviously a pinkish hue to any of the different colors that you can set the jelly to, but it's something that you'd kind of get used to rather quickly, and you're left with a very bright, dense and, well, rather functional decorative rectangle on your desk. It's a very solid board in more ways than one, and the second keyboard I've ever held that I'm pretty confident that you could use as a weapon if you should need to. My only real complaint about the jelly is the polish, the finesse of the construction. The four sheets of acrylic are held together by 10 screws threading directly onto the acrylic from the bottom up, which means that this board is definitely one I would not suggest taking apart very often because, you know, the more you do, the bigger the chance the screws are going to start coming loose and you won't have that ideal mounting pressure and the board's gonna be a little bit wobbly and maybe start to fall apart. But the major one is the fact that the acrylic sheets aren't set together precisely. They are all slightly misaligned in different ways from any angle you look at the keyboard, which also means they haven't been cut to shape precisely one on top of the other, or you would see the same level or same angle of distortion from any of the four corners, which doesn't happen. I get it that acrylic is a rather expensive material to work with and that this board sits around the same price range as other boards that are potentially less premium or 
potentially cost less to actually make, like the 3068, with both of them sitting at the same $110. But if you're going for a design, for a build like this, I'd also expect you guys to focus the majority of your attention and polish to these details in specific. So in the end, both the Jelly TKL and the 3068 have their strengths, their, their good points, and their quirky points as well. If the design of something like the Neon jumps at you more than the more subdued approach of the 3068, and you don't really think the 65% layout you know, warrants the 10 extra bucks that you'd be paying for it, at least you know that Echo's got you covered with other options. And I wouldn't necessarily say that the polish thing on the build of the Jelly alone would make it a no-go for anyone that was looking for it or thrilled by its design proposition. But because of how much traction, innovation, and attention to detail we have been seeing in the mechanical keyboard space, I also think that this can very well end up being a breaking point for some people that would end up choosing another keyboard on top of the Jelly because of it. But today, in this sort of head-to-head -head comparison between these two, despite my love for 65% keyboards, the Jelly TKL for the same $110 does seem and look to be the more unique one of the two. Plus that, you know, lighting thing with the 3068 really didn't work for me. And it also sounds a bit better as well, at least in my opinion. So I'm crowning it the winner of today's double bill review. Congrats, Jelly TKL. And that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, so share it and check out these other ones that might be of interest to you as well. All the links are down below, but if I've missed anything, let me know in the comments or over on Discord. Thanks a lot for watching, this is Gus, and I'll catch you guys later.